All right. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and get rolling. So for those of you who are new, you know, we do this every Friday, or at least we try to, unless I have COVID or, or I'm just too tired, <laughs> but, <laughs> like last time. But um, what I'm trying to do is just kind of focus our attention on AI as it pertains to marketing. So I'm not really trying to um, kind of go off on the novelty of AI, uh, you know, because you can find that all over YouTube where people are talking about little tips and tricks and interesting gadgets and, and things. You know, I'm not the guy who wants to write a prompt to find out what's in my refrigerator and, and turning it into a meal, right? I'm really more focused on how do we make this a business operation? How do we leverage AI to make our businesses more efficient, our marketing communications more effective, et cetera? So um, I don't know, I guess it was uh, four weeks ago, we did an episode on AI note takers. And I'm, you know, for me, they're critical to what we do. We've been testing out a lot of them. Obviously, you can uh, see that we use one called Fathom mainly because it's it's uh, it was the first one we came across, and I started to come across a whole lot more. And I thought I need to figure out which one is really really good. Um, and then knowing that they'll all take turns iterating, and so we went through this process of evaluating six different note takers. I spent entirely too much time and money trying to get AI to analyze the AI. Uh, it, literally, I probably had 50 hours of work in it trying to get ChatGPT to analyze everybody's transcript to see which worked. And I was like, okay, this is stupid. I just, I just really burned a lot of time on that. It should have just gone side by side. But anyway, so we put on this episode and in it, you know, everybody was like, hey, you know, who's the winner? What do you think? Who was more accurate? And and I said, you know, the only thing that I could tell you is that I couldn't find a, a real clear winner. I had to stick with Fathom because of the way it operated for me, but that they were all having problems with transcriptions. They were all having problems with usability. And what I didn't tell you guys is the day before we put on the episode, uh, a lady from Meet Geek joined our group. And I was like, rut row, you know, I said, well, I got to be truthful. I got to be honest. I can't just um, kind of hold back because now we have one of the products in our midst, you know? So I thought, well, let's just see what happens. And so um, Meet Geek came in the middle of the pack for a couple of reasons. I kind of liked their process, liked their thinking, but I still had to get the accuracy down and the usability down. And I guess it was, uh, I don't know, yesterday morning, uh, Daria of Meet Geek reached out to me and said, hey, I just wanted to thank you uh, for your feedback. We've made some adjustments to our product. And I was like, Whoa, that is how you build a brand. You know, first they were listening, second, they paid attention, and third, they did something about it. So when she reached out to me, I was like, you know what? This is such an incredible lesson for every brand out there. And it's such a it's actually a really good product. But the fact that they paid attention, I thought, I need to bring them on our little show. And so Daria. Uh, I want to give you the floor. Uh, so Daria is in uh, Poland, correct? Yeah, that's right. Hi, everyone. So she's got the long distance award for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's depending on what Kelly three. stops driving, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah. I mean, otherwise, she's <laughs> that's also true. I, I don't know. I think geographically, John, I might be the furthest away because I'm in the UK. So as the crow, oh. we, we oh, might, there you go. Daria and I might, might both be sharing the ticket. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Well, congratulations, Matt. We'll we'll, we'll call it a, a draw then. All right, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let her take it away because she's got some interesting stuff to to share with us, and then we'll probably have plenty of time at the end for Q and A. So. Daria, the floor is yours, madam. Have at it. 
thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I hope I won't be here the only speaking head uh, because it's not my goal <laughs> to sell you or advertise something. Um, first of all, thank you for all the feedback. Actually, it was me scrambling down all the uh, notes uh, shared by John and by everyone. And um, actually the day after we had our hands-on uh, meeting with the team, uh, and I was presenting them this uh, notebook with all the uh, feedback. And um, we managed to implement some, and we have some rolling out um, in October. Um, so um, if you're okay with that, I'd like to share what we changed uh, in Medgeek. And uh, I also want uh, wanted to bring some value instead of just showing off Medgeek. Uh, but present you some unusual ways, probably unusual ways of using note takers uh, in your work. Um, because uh, I'm sure that uh, none of you are aware of all the features or the functionalities that they uncover. Um, so basically, maybe while I'm sharing the screen, uh, you can share with me so far what's your major use cases of using AI note takers? Is it just to record and then search the transcript or probably something else? Uh, it would be nice to know, actually. <laughs> I will be sharing the screen so far. Okay, well, I can, I can start and then I'll let anybody else who's using note takers uh, go. But for me, you know, what we do is obviously we record meetings like this. We record all our uh, inter-staff meetings. We record sales calls. Um, we record client meetings. And for me, what I'm looking for is, you know, what I shared with you was I'm looking for total recall, right? Because I know a lot of times I, I, I am horrible at just connecting a face to a name. And, and sometimes I'll have a conversation with somebody and six months will go by and I'll need to reach out to that person. And so I'll just search, find the person I'm like, oh, yeah, that's who it is. And I can bring it back. That's the on the simplest side. On the more complex side, I want to make sure that I'm totally focused in a meeting with a client. I don't want to be distracted by taking notes. You know, I don't want to be in that that meeting where I'm looking down and I totally miss something. And I look up and then the teacher calls on me, you know, and I'm like, uh -huh. I don't know what you just said. Right. And so I love having the note taker there to do all that. And then at the end of it, obviously, I like a little summary. I like it to assign the tasks that were discussed. And I like it to actually be able to coach me and say, you know what, you, uh, there was a discussion here and everybody agreed to do something, but nobody took the initiative to say, I'll own it and I'll, I'll deliver it, right? If you could get something to, to, to break that out. Um, that would be really, really interesting. So anyway, if anybody else has use cases, have at it. I think Jake I, I, I can, I'll, I'll chime in, but I mean, I think, you know, first of all, there's obviously a big benefit to be able to focus attention and not have it divided between taking notes and taking action items. But the bigger one for me has been the subjectivity because humans are inherently biased. And so if I write down action items through a meeting, I, it might be the ones that I think are important, but then I'll go through a, a summarized meeting of action items. And uh, yeah, there's about seven there that I didn't pick up because they just weren't top of mind for me, but they're really important action items. So I think having a, the objective uh, kind of a source of, of truth for your meetings and captured in that way is actually one of the biggest benefits of AI assisted uh, meeting notes. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and for me, uh, Dar, this is Sandy. I wrote it out too, but for me, um, my core area is making sure I get the actions. So what I see that typically happens in meetings is we have a meeting and everybody goes away and says, great, but I want to know what the top actions are. I don't really have the time to go back and listen to the whole meeting again, but I definitely want to follow up on the action items. Yeah, cool. Well, actually, all the points are united by um, uh, transcribing, re memorizing, and detecting action items. So that's cool that we all know what we expect from every note taker. So it's easy to compare. <laughs> uh, 
um, so yeah, cool. Uh, probably I will just uh, quickly show off then the changes that we made uh, thanks to you. And then I will probably add some new use cases that you can um, add to the one that you just shared with me and uh, probably extract even more value from your note taker, whether it is uh, MidGeek or other. Uh, probably some of them uh, share certain features that um, I will be talking about today. Um, but first of all, I just took, um, let me take this uh, meeting as an ex oops, uh, not this, this one as an example. Um, and uh, first of all, the biggest uh, change oh, that that we made is that we renamed uh, the maidens tab into AI summary. Um, when I was uh, at the uh, previous round table, you were checking all the uh, tab around, but you didn't find the summary on the screen and it was just hidden under this uh, tab. We renamed it, now it's super easy to detect. Uh, and uh, oh, um, and um, now you can easily find the summary again with the action items and important details that was shared during the call. Um, we got your second feedback is that it's super important to be so that every feature was uh, in a quick access. So for sure we did, we explored uh, different actions, how we can just, for example, use one button in order to copy uh, all the, the entire summary and pass it to whatever you need. Uh, so basically this is one due to our uh, mixed panel analytics, we know that this button is um, uh, kind of booming in terms of clickability. <laughs> so everyone now copy the uh, summary and share it. Uh, I'm not sure where, but whenever they want it to be. Um, in the in the week, we also will be um, releasing and uh, your search fun functionality. We also heard that it's super important for you not to uh, kind of search uh, all the keywords that were mentioned in every discussion, uh, but uh, certain um, phrase. So it would be easily done uh, with a quick search uh, inside one meeting or across all the meetings that, that are in your account. Um, and um, uh, going back to the AI summary, I want to pause here for a quick um, uh, notice uh, that uh, you all noticed the ChatGPT is tough, uh, but I think it's nice to point that we do not use um, just ChatGPT in order to produce the AI summary of the conversation. If uh, we will use just that, the AI summary will just deliver Mm, not really good results for sure, because uh, every discussion, every conversation has its own highlights, its own uh, I don't know topic. It can be it can be a demo call, it can be consulting, it can be uh, sales speech, and whatever. Um, and uh, if using just the algorithm of ChatGPT, it doesn't uh, extract uh, much value. Uh, so we use our own um, AI algorithms uh, that detect all the highlights that you all uh, that you can see um, in the summary. Uh, those are action items, tasks, uh, important details, facts. By facts, we also, we always uh, mean um, numbers. Uh, for example, quotes, um, I know, dates, deadlines, agreements, um, and other stuff. Um, we there is something I cannot demonstrate you, but please um, uh, believe me <laughs> or uh, try me to geek out after uh, this round table. Uh, we improved the accuracy for more than 40 languages. Um, so now you will see even better transcription and AI summary after the call. Um, and we improved it for accents as well. As you can notice, I'm not a native speaker. <laughs> Uh, so I noticed uh, really great improvements in the transcription um, as well. Um, it was not bad before, <laughs> just in case, uh, but now it's even uh, better. Um, one stuff that uh, before uh, proceeding to the um, use cases that I want to share with you, uh, I want to give you a quick uh, uh, sneak peek of what we are preparing in a couple of weeks. 
Um, so basically, this th those are the meta templates. Uh, they are already inside MidGeek. You can already use them. Uh, but what we are going to release is that uh, MidGeek will auto detect the type of your meeting that you held. For, exa uh, for example, again, uh, sales call, and it will apply the template based on uh, this type of the conversation. So the highlights that you will see after um, the highlights in the meeting summary that you will see after the meeting uh, will be attached to the type of the conversation that you held. Uh, for example, if it was a uh, sales uh, pitch and you discussed competitors, uh, quotes, and so on, it will highlight exactly those parts and not the parts that are not important for the sales call. Um, so um, this will improve the AI summary that you received uh, after the call that is much more likely will be shareable with your uh, prospects, with your partners, uh, with your participants of uh, your meeting. Um, so that was a quick introduction in our changes. Um, I hope I was not super quick because uh, sometimes I'm uh, trying to cover my accent with the extra speed. Um, so let me know <laughs> if uh, everything is okay. Um, and uh, I will proceed then. Sure, Jake, I see your hands on. <laughs> Thank you, Daria. One of the things um, I always have a question about is I'm I'm seeing on this call, you know, Daria's note taker, John's Fathom note taker, and I, I envision this, hey, if we're all using these, there's all of these intrusive bots that are attending the meeting. There's like twice as many, quote unquote, people on the call. Um, is Do you have any plans to to actually provide this capability without having to have these bots on the, these these obtrusive little AI bots on the call? Um, it's a great question, and we receive it quite often. Uh, we will be um, adding the extension and mobile app um, to Medgeek, uh, so it will be not just uh, the way as it is now. Uh, it will be the option to record it um, without MidGeek actually presenting uh, at the call. Uh, but I can say you um, why it's actually um, not a problem why most of people is that we really, really, really hard on the privacy and all the uh, security stuff. And we always suggest everyone to um, alert in advance that the call is recorded. Um, so uh, just MidGeek uh, being on the call, and it also sends the notification uh, before the call starts uh, that, the, uh, that the meeting is recorded. It just uh, kind of helps you to validate all the rules um, of the privacy and the security. So it's all uh, uh, covered with MidGeek. Uh, but again, uh, going back to the answer, uh, we are going to uh, add also the Chrome extension. John Lawler, you had a question. Yeah, uh, question. Uh, is it possible to use uh, a Meet Geek for when I, I'm preparing for a preparation? So it's really it's really a meeting of one, uh, running PowerPoint, talking it through for practice. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can be uh, so. How Meet Geek join you? Actually, uh, here is my page of all the upcoming uh, meetings. Uh, so everything that is on my calendar and has uh, Zoom, Google Meet, or Microsoft Teams uh, conference link, it all appears here on the page. And I can then control uh, if I want MedGeek to join and record and transcribe this call or not. So uh, if you are testing your presentation on Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, or Google Meet, then yes, for sure, MediGeek will join you um, and record it. What if I don't want to test it on on Zoom or um, um, on, my, uh, on Zoom or any other service like that? Um, uh, then, I just want to sit in front of my computer and talk. Uh, then you just use the upload function. So uh, you record it outside MidGeek. Um, and upload it to MedGeek, and then you have uh, the transcription and the recording in MedGeek. Uh, but um, as MedGeek is the meeting assistant tool, we provide kind of all the features, features and functionalities for the meet meeting environment. Uh, so these three platforms are supported. 
Okay, so I would have to record it independently of your software, then upload it. Yeah. Okay. And what about phone calls? Um, as well, uh, record it outside Midgig and then upload. Okay, thank you. So, John, to if I'm hearing you right, what you're describing is: Does Meet Geek have or have any intentions of performing somewhat like, say, Loom, where you just click the button and it starts recording right out of the box without it having to tap into something like Teams or Zoom? Is that kind of correct? What I'm hearing you say? Yes, but with all the bells and whistles at the back end that it has. Yeah, right. So that it, you literally just click a button, it starts recording you, and then it shoves it into here. It does all the analytics and all that other fun stuff, right? Yes, absolutely. That'd be a cool, that would be a really yeah. cool feature. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a great idea. I will uh, note it as well. Well, Midgit yeah. will make it for me, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's right. You're Thanks. not a programmer. Yeah, so one <laughs> of the things that that I, I think is kind of interesting, and same if I'm not incorrect, I think what you're putting up is that all of these AI note takers joining your Zoom meeting can conflict with the number of seats you have available in Zoom. Is that is that correct? Yeah. So um, that would be an, an issue. Now, the other thing that I've noticed, and I don't know, so you'd have to answer this, Daria. I don't know whether this is a meet geek issue, but when we start a meeting, you know, I typically start the meeting, right? I start the meeting the, the note taker joins, but the note taker doesn't start recording until the second person comes mm -hmm. on, right? Which is a cool feature, but I'm wondering um, if that would accomplish what John is essentially saying. Look, can I just pop in, you know, since there's no direct recording uh, mechanism, can I just turn on a meeting with Zoom, have nobody else join but the note taker and have it start recording and then quit? Is that a possibility? Um, it's not the case with Medgig because Medgig uh, records um, even if there is one person talking. Um, it is okay. important that the person should talk because if uh, he doesn't, Medgig will quit the room because he will um, treat it as the um, non-attendance. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, if you are speaking, then Medgig recording. Uh, and if, for example, for 15 minutes, uh, you are not speaking and Midgeek mid left, you can still invite him again um, from the from this dashboard. Uh, so th th that's not uh, the case. I got you. So that's an interesting workaround, John, you know, because I, I noticed that Fathom will not record until another human pops in the room. But if Meet Geek will actually do that, then you just you know fire up an instant Zoom session and start doing your dog and pony show and and it'll work. I don't know whether that works for you or not. It's not as cool as like a Loom feature, but it's <laughs> close enough for government work. But if it's automatically joining, honestly, it's still the 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 same number of clicks, just about right. Just food for thought. Yeah. So I've got a follow-up question. Thanks, Daria, for doing this. But uh, it's probably directed at you and Bob Miller based on a comment Bob made using it for dictation. If you can record yourself only on a meeting and then your random thoughts get sorted out and collated and summarized, that would be very useful. And I'm ex I suspect that's what Bob... Is that what you're doing, Bob? I got to take myself oh. on mute. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, I've been playing around with doing that exact thing so that I could, um, because I don't like, I'm, you know, this is how spoiled we're getting, right? We don't have to type anymore. We can just kind of sit and really right. actually do what dra dragging dictation was trying to get us to do 20 years ago. Right. But now we can actually pull that off, right? And and I've been playing around with, okay, how do I have to phrase what I'm saying so it gets tagged correctly, you know, as a fact or an action item, that kind of deal. Right. Because there is a it does use a protocol to try and figure that out. Um, so, you you know, you got to you have to think it through if you wanted to make a certain type of note or something, you could do it that way. That was the notes I've been making about, oh, this would be really cool if I could get it. It was all having to do with using it by myself to kind of um, just like um, just like everyone's been talking about work through presentations and then get all the text and then be able to do the other things with the text that we get transcription that we can do. But it's. It, it's really cool to think that, okay, well, you can tag different things while you're talking, 
you know what I mean? And an AI would know, okay, well, he tagged that. He said, tag, you know, tag the next sentence with whatever, tag the next paragraph or whatever, and then tag it and then have it all sorted on the back end. There's some, I think there's a lot, there's going to be a lot getting developed over time to do that. But yeah, that's what I've been doing, John. That's exactly okay. what I was doing to, and it, and, you know, and it works about a million times better than, than any of that other stuff used to work, you know, back in the day when, <laughs> when you were paying a gazillion dollars for like Dragon Dictation and some of the other voice recognition systems. So I'm thinking of two expansions on that. One is to have a style. In other words, you can summarize right. it with a specific style, uh, DNA, as we had with the DNA voice uh, capability. The other thing is a one-on-one -on -one or a small, small group where you can turn a camera on and a whiteboard presentation oftentimes comes up with some really cool, uh, innovative, especially marketing narratives or somebody says something that's really powerful, short sentence. You don't want to lose that stuff. Uh, I'm thinking on a you know small group meetings, which is just a one-time recording. There's nobody else on on you know that right. in a remote location. That would yeah, be well, there's a reason you couldn't do that. Right? environment, yeah. Yeah, there's a reason you couldn't do that, right? You could put you could put a camera on the board and you could right. have a speaker phone in the room and have that have right. a have just a conference. It's a workaround. Have a conference call. Have that note taker join the conference call, and then just have your in room meeting and let it. You know, let it do the transcription. As long as you got a good right. microphone set up in there and it's catching everybody's voice pretty well, then yeah, you should it should do exactly that. Plus, you've got the video to back it up. You could also, I mean, there's all kinds of other tools to take that video, by the way, and then strip all the um, stuff out of it that you might want, right? So yeah. there's, you know, to really kind of help you optimize that. So yeah, the old way of doing it was to take photographs of everything in the whiteboard and make notes yeah, and try and remember what it was. Yeah. Yeah, take your phone out and do all of that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. John, go ahead. It's John Law. Okay. Um, if I have my, if I'm in a meeting, right, a Zoom meeting, let's say, and I have my micro, my my speaker off, does it still record? Um, it will record for some time. Uh, if it will, if the silence will be too long. Uh, you mean if you are the only one in the room? Or no, I, I'm, in a, I'm, in a, I'm in a meeting, but I, I show just some noise in my background and I want to get rid of it. So I hit my, uh, oh. I hit the, uh, well, now, so actually, I, I don't, I, I don't, I want to talk to somebody uh, and I don't, let's say, why would I turn the speaker off? Um, yeah, if you didn't want to hear them, I guess, John, and you yeah, just yes, wanted to talk. I, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me make it simple. I want to turn the speaker off and still have the recording going on. I have found other things will shut it down. I think Otter does that. Otter won't, you know, they're working through the speaker. Um, Otter will shut it down. They, they will just it's weird. think there's nothing going on. Oh, are, John, are you talking about turning off your microphone or turning no. off your speaker? My speaker. Okay, because okay, because in a Zoom meeting, anybody who is mic'd up is getting recorded, regardless of what's going on with your speaker. Okay, so it's not really recording from your speaker unless you're playing back like a YouTube video and you want the tool to record that. Then you have yeah. to make sure that you've enabled system audio so that it'll record the system audio. Right? Okay. So it's not recording from your speaker. In other words, like right now, me talking and you talking, it's it's recording through Zoom because you have a microphone on. It's not recording because my speakers are on. Okay, right? great. Thanks. Makes sense. Sure. Yep. I think I understand what he's saying, though. He's, he's saying that some systems may have those things tied together, where if you were to mute your speaker, it would assume that you're, you know, taking an action of getting off the meeting yeah. or, or trying to drop out or whatever, and then cut the other one off. So I think that's what he was just yeah. asking: was does Meetgate yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah. I think I think Otter does that. I have noticed, but uh... yeah, it depends on what source they're using to record from, and that's that's a, a yeah so. uh, and. I would categorize that as a bug and not a feature, John. If it was me, to be yeah. honest with you, because it's like, why? Why would that? Why it's, would you want to have those things change? It doesn't make any damn sense, right? So, right, right. <laughs> I agree. Uh, but actually, you can also. Um, I was um, uplo uh, uploading this page uh, to show uh, that uh, you can also pause uh, kind of uh, the recording of main gate of this call. For example, there are some times that you want to extract from, from the recording some sensitive um, information. For example, if it's um, interview call, you want to record the call, but leave the salary expectations, for example, outside of the, the recording, um, then you can also pause it and um, 
renew um, this button. Uh, it's just uh, one of the features as well. Well, Daria, that's the very professional reason there. to have a pause button. I got a lot of other reasons that I need one, but that's a good that's a good profession. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. right. Cool. No, that's cool. I never saw that before. That's really yeah. interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, once uh, the maiden is started, it is still on the upcoming page. Uh, so you can uh, visit the MidKick and control um, it from here. I mean, to be clear, what you're doing is you're pausing the transcription at that point, right? I mean, that's really what you're, you, you're causing. That's what you're doing. You're pausing the audio recognition. For the, for yeah. those of us who are, it doesn't, <laughs> it's not going to save you. The recording's still going on. It's just, it's not transcribing you. So just to be clear. Is no, it's, it, it's it doesn't it's, record. If you're recording the conference, yeah, if you're recording the conference, that's separate from the note taker. So, is that um, true, Darren? Or is it, it literally pauses the well, recording and the transcription? Yeah, it's it uh, it leaves the meeting room and re enters when uh, I press, there will be the resume button. Yeah, but John, right now we're recording this, right? Yeah. And if you turned off your note taker and took it offline, it's not stopping the recording. It's stopping the transcription because it's not recording that. It's, it's okay, not so using what, that. Well, they're, yeah, well, they're two different things recording. Right they're two different now, things. Right? There's right. Zoom is recording and the note taker is recording. If I pause yeah. the note taker, it's recording yeah. will stop. Yeah. Zoom will yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you I, mean? That's what I was trying to make clear. If you, if, you, okay. if you don't want somebody to hear what you're saying, just pausing the note taker is not solving the whole problem. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true. <laughs> we cannot delete from. Um, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christy, you were making a point in the chat. Can you unmute and clarify? If that's possible. One minute. Okay. She's eating lunch. No. Sorry, well, she's, well, she's coming off there. I noticed uh, it looks like right now, this currently is compatible with the, what Zoom, Teams, and Google Meet. Google Meets. Yeah, we're so we're kind of a standardized internally on Zoom, but the reality is, especially in in my role, in some of the more customer facing roles, I'm on Slack connect calls. I'm on uh, some calls that are happening, audio third party stuff that's going on through the browser. Is this would this not support all of those others? Like WebEx is another big one as an example. Mm -hmm. um, we're not on it, but I'm required to do it because you know the customer wants me to do it through that platform, et cetera. Will it not pick up any of that? Or are integrations at, required with uh, every platform? At the moment, no. Uh, but we do receive this feedback as well, for example, for Slack and for WebEx. Uh so for sure we will implement this. I just cannot um um take all the responsibilities for the deadlines uh so i cannot say when uh, but for sure we'd like to expand for at least um, slack for sure uh, because mirgeg is uh, usually the tool that is used company-wide and for sure slack is one of the uh, main channels for the interactions uh so yeah um shortly answer but, but each, each platform requires an additional integration it sounds like yeah yeah yeah, that's true. Okay, Christy, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I just have a lot of background noise. Nice. So I had to <laughs> remove myself from that area. Um, yeah, I was just intrigued by that whiteboard problem. And given you guys have so much experience with that, I was just curious, like, is the only solution to like dedicate a laptop or a camera to be focused right on the whiteboard or are there other more inventive ways? Because it's a huge problem. We've got three people in the room. They're using the whiteboard. And we've got five people on the phone. And no one on the phone can see what's going on. Yeah, that's that's going to be your only solution. Unless you're using a pretty sophisticated smart board system. Yeah, and the okay. easiest thing to do is to just put a laptop up, put a camera in the center of the desk, aim it at the whiteboard. And have that member join, have that, obviously have that um, laptop join the meeting and then share that screen. Yeah, we'll have to start doing that. Thank you. The, the challenge with that scenario, though, because this is calendar integrated, and so it's picking up speaker participant names from the calendar. If there's people 
in the room, is there also detection and distinction between the different voices in the room if they're not all individually logged in, as an example, Daria? Um, I'm guessing could no. You um, could you please rephrase a bit? <laughs> So, um, so the scenario where you have a hybrid, there's a room of people, they're not all mm -hmm. going to be logged in individually to Zoom or the web conferencing platform. They're, they're openly speaking in the room. Does, you, does the software make the distinction between different speakers oh. in the transcription and in the meeting notes summary and action items? Uh, yes, it does. Um, for example, I have uh, this uh, call also um, opened. So as you can see, um, there are lots of participants there. Uh, it distinguishes uh, the speakers. And if you see that uh, it doesn't detect it correctly, you can um, always uh, change it. Uh, so and help uh, MidGeek to detect better in future meetings. Um, I cannot say that it is always 100% accurate because the reasons uh, vary. Uh, the sound may not be good enough uh, the microphone may be not good enough, the accent may be too strong, um, everyone's speaking over each other. So sometimes for sure there is discrepancies. Um, and um, this is one of the kind of things that we always strive to improve uh, together with the accuracy of the transcription. Um, so it's a, an ongoing process of improvement. Uh, but shortly answer, yeah, um, it gig detects different speakers um and we strive for better accuracy every time so daria i want to ask or refine that that question that jake asked right there because it, it, his question you know right there the list you had for tagging people i assume were names who had joined the meeting exactly. that, that was where that list exactly. was being it would, show, from. It would show up as like anonymous right it would be like yeah yeah one because they might not be in the system they might not be on the zoom etc well they, they they may be in a conference room with three other people and that just be one of the nodes on the in the conference so i think what he was really asking is does me geek have the ability for you to go in and look at the transcription and if it's and tag it with somebody who is not in the member list of the meeting necessarily i, I think that's um a, yeah mm -hmm. it yeah. does yeah it detects uh, it, a different it detects, voice uh, from, from the saw. calendar yeah <laughs> yeah from the town well, wait a minute i, I want to it, Daria, what did you just say? The text from the calendar, or from the uh, from the from the uh, attendee list? Members, the name, the members' names from the calendar. From from the attendee yeah, list on the calendar appointment. Yeah, but yeah. If you know, have but, four people yes. in a room and four different people's voices, will it detect the difference in the voices and say this is another speaker? But it it doesn't. Or is it just saying, okay, this voice is coming from this microphone, therefore it's John Munsell, even though it might be you know, Kelly or Bob, you know, See, that's the thing. You might not have people in the attending list because if you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to have my local right. team, I'm just going to have me, Bob Miller. And then when I get in that conference room, I'm going to drag three more people with me. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not, and they won't be attendees on the list. So that was my question. Can you take a, take a snippet of conversation and tag that for somebody who is either not in the attendee list well, basically, who's not in the attendee list or on the, you know, on the member list? Can you customize a tag for a voice that's outside of the scope of the attendee list? Um, you cannot kind of attach um, the uh, transcript to the person that was not on the call and tag uh, him because um, uh, MidGit cannot detect um, everyone. But you can uh, share this meeting for sure or part of the meeting or um, for example uh, this action you can just copy here and share whatever you want but whenever you want uh, with whom you want uh, but if that person was not um, in the participant list then there is, there is no way uh, for us to kind of tag him no, yeah, no, that, I, yeah. they were, I, that's that's exactly what was the point. There was no way you'd yeah. be able to tag him because you didn't right. have the information. But if I'm if I'm the one that's editing the transcript and going through it, I could tag it with somebody else's yeah. name, saying, "Okay, that was that was Joe." But it, the, Joe may not be in the attendee list, you know. So, so in other words, could yeah. you add an attendee that's not on the list and then yeah, I mean, appropriately yeah. assign? You could do that, Daria. You could add an no, attendee. No, 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 oh, no. On, yeah. uh, if he was on the calendar is. list, yeah, you can tag him. That's right. uh, so for now, example, he, he will be on the calendar list, but he didn't attend. 
Uh, but if he was not on the calendar list and he didn't attend, then no. Gotcha. Okay, because like Otter will detect a different voice and it'll mm -hmm. just say speaker three, you know, That's and then you just go in and edit all the speaker threes. So I didn't know whether Meet Geek had that possibility where it's like, okay, this is coming through the same microphone, the same attendee, but it's a different right. voice. It's a different voice. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it would if it would get and to it, that, it would say, hey, cool. I don't know who this is because I only have that particular yeah. microphone tag for Bob. But those was a different voice from Bob's mic. So I don't know who that is. I'm just going to tag him as right. speaker two from that box. And then Bob will have to go in there and tag whoever that was with a, you know, tag that speaker two yeah. tag with a name. Yeah. That's what we're really but see that because that Otter does do that. Me. That's the reason I was asking. Yeah. Otter will yeah. Mm -hmm. Otter does do that. But, but that kind of brings me back to Christie's point earlier because your solution actually doesn't work with Christie's point on Meet Geek because Meet Geek only swaps, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me, but Meet Geek only swaps between active speaker and shared screen. And so if you have a shared screen, that's the only thing that you would see in the recording box, unless you would actually see the active speaker and the shared screen at the same time. Whereas Zoom, you have if you split your recordings up on Zoom, you can have the grid view, you can have the active speaker view, you can have the shared screen view. And so what happens if you've got a separate camera that's filming the whiteboard, that technically is an attendee, but it would never have an active speaker because it, it it's not, you'd have the, you have it basically muted. And so in a meet geek thing, you'd have to somehow trigger the audio on that so that it would show up on the, the recording for meet geek. Is that, is that correct, Daria? Everybody um, understand yes. what I just described? As far as I got it, uh, so basically <laughs> it, 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 it has on the screen. So basically there was the screen sharing and it was, um, um, who was that? Um, Daisy uh, speaking. So uh, here she is. Uh, so, oops. Uh, so uh, yes, I saw see only on the recording. Uh, I see only the one who is speaking, and the screen she's he sharing. Uh, all the rest are um, not recorded separately. If I got your okay. question right. <laughs> yeah, you did. So that means if there was a camera trained on a whiteboard, it would basically never be on here um, unless. Well, no. it, it can't no, share if you're a because it's filming a whiteboard. Yeah, that's well, right. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. The, but it's filming the whiteboard, so it's yeah. not. It's not the whiteboard. If, if it's shared, it's recorded. If it's not yeah, shared, but, right? No, but, but if I, it's you, a smart you, you board. It. Yeah, if it's a smart board, Bob, that's connected to the thing, then yeah, you could get it to share the smart board. But no, if but it's, I, if, I, it's I a, do this, if it's a dumb board, I, <laughs> I do this all the time. I, I, I've got a you know. Bad connection. Is that just me? I've got a camera and then it different things all the time, right? But then I, I use it as my main camera and I'm able to actually share that camera as a source, right? I can actually share uh -huh. it as a as a source. Um and right. then you're just looking at the whiteboard or whatever the hell you're looking at as my share. But it stays there. You're not wrong oh. there. It stays there as the share. Um, uh -huh. Um, it doesn't okay. you know, so it's it's it is what's shared. Looks like if I'm sharing a document, it is what's shared. Um, okay, so it doesn't Zoom, change until I change this the source. I got you. So you yeah. say so you on Zoom, you share a different camera source. Is that what you're saying? Or Bob yes, that? that's correct. Yeah, exactly. You can have more okay. than one camera on a laptop. Yeah, yeah that's true. You, you can, can have more than one camera on a laptop, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll okay. show you sometime, John. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll have you do it in the next show. How's that sound? Oh, uh, no, I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'll show you and then we'll figure out if it's bad. <laughs> it ain't worth a whole Very show. Cool. I can promise you. It ain't going to make it right. any exciting. Right. Hey, Daria, another question. So I see up at the top of your screen, you got 513 names in there. Does that mean 513 people were in that particular recording or you have 513 names compiled from all previous meetings? Um, no, it's uh, the attendance, atten participants. Um, so basically, this is one of the uh, use cases that I'd like mm, to mm -hmm. share with you how the note taker can be used as, for example, 
uh, yesterday um, I got allergic, <laughs> but I really needed to attend this uh, event. Uh, so in November, uh, we are participating in the Web Summit. Uh, so, and we are in the process of preparing to it. Uh, so this was the um, meeting um, organized by Web Summit in order to get prepared. Um, and uh, I knew that I cannot attend it, but I really need the recording. Uh, so all I did, I just invited my bot uh, to join instead of me. And uh, now I have all the recording with the uh, entire transcription, mm -hmm. um, highlights, and um, uh, summary of the call. Um, there is the attend great big, big attendance list. We can just delete it. Uh, we do not um, store any emails for sure because this is not what MidGeek can collect, but we see the names. Um, and uh, we see all the highlights that were taken during um, the conversation. So I can catch up with the uh, entire recording when I feel good. <laughs> uh, so answering the question, they are all the attendants, uh, not just the list of uh, all the members that were uh, recorded um, uh, during gotcha. the year, for example. Okay, so if I if I go to another meeting and I only have two people in there and I want to change the speaker, I'm not going to get a list of uh, no. everybody. <laughs> no, no, okay, because no. that's the thing I hated about Otter. You click that thing and you got everybody who's ever been in your meetings uh, as an option. No, that, that's again uh, uh, partially answering uh, the um, Bob's uh, comment is that uh, we extract the uh, attendance participants of the uh, calendar uh, meeting. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can choose uh, whom to apply this uh, part of the conversation only from the list of those who attended or who was on the participant list. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I think that's a really good use case, right? If you if if you've got yeah. conflicts, right, you can't be at a particular webinar, but you'd really yeah. like to, you know, you'd really like to get the content of it and have it, you know, have it to where you mm -hmm. can watch it. And that's a really good use case. Just sign up your, you know, sign up your note taker and let them go to the meeting and jump on board. And yeah, you know, I actually get all like the language that. and the video. So that's a very good use case. That's, that's right. a well, good and, idea. And her use case of being sick. You know, heck yeah, that that's a that's a good yeah, it's deal. practical. Yeah, you know, because like, look, I, I have I have ridiculous allergies too, and so like when I'm in the middle of an allergy attack, the last thing I need to be doing is sneezing all over the place in a meeting. So uh, it would be cool if I could go and relax and then catch up on the meeting later. So I like that. Yeah. So I mean, it's pretty common for me to want to be in more than one place at once on these webinars. So that's good. It's a cool idea. Yeah. That's yeah, my that's life, true. man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, Corinne, what was your issue? Corinne, can you unmute and tell us what yeah, you're talking about? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I, it's funny. I had a, a, a client this week who the person didn't show up for a meeting, but their bot did. <laughs> and they immediately canceled the meeting with, you know, with the prospect for them. Um, and, and then the CEO called me and was like, should I have had a meeting for the bot to oh, just record? No. I was like, no, oh, no, no way. If it's, oh. I mean, if you're doing a, you know, a meeting for a client and the client can't show up, I'm not going to do a meeting for a yeah. bot. I, get, I totally bot, get the yeah. use case on a large meeting or a webinar or something like that. But um, are, are we at a point where we're going to start sending bots to meetings for us instead <laughs> of us? Yeah, for well, sure. That's not what we're well, I know that some of them like Reed and Meet Geek will automatically join it and they'll join it ahead of you. And what Which happened is what to I me think one happened. time. I, th I think the guy yeah. didn't make it and he didn't cancel it. And he forgot to tell you. Yeah, and the bot showed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. What exactly. Happened? But it totally well, I mean, freaked out the CEO. I mean, he was- Oh, it would have freaked like, me out. Totally freaked <laughs> out, like, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, well, like no. uh, in in a seems point, what happened to me is like I, there was a, a webinar or something that I had signed up for, and the uh, the bot that I was testing joined before I did, and it wouldn't let me in, and it said oh. you're already in this meeting, and I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not, you know. And I tried from different browsers, I tried from everything. I was like, what in the heck? I'm not in this meeting, and so I just had to blow it off. 
And then it happened again. And then I finally figured out, oh, it was read.ai that joined before me, mm -hmm. which then kicked me out uh, from joining. So I had to go kill the that gum bot. That was that was kind of yeah. interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've often wanted to be in two places at one time, but um I <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I hate going back and listening to recordings unless I have a really specific purpose <laughs> and something I'm looking for. You know, that's in part that's why I like these note takers, because I can jump around and I don't have to listen from beginning to end to look for those little pearls of of wisdom or assignment or you know, tasks in the mix. Um, yeah. So, you know, thinking of, of sitting and listening to four hours of, of meetings that a bot attended for me just doesn't sound you. very exciting. Yeah. Now I wouldn't, uh, you know, there are only a couple of times when I'd send one without me and that would be if I'm, I'm sick or, or on a plane or something and I really wanted to catch it. So right. that's why I thought it was a great use case. Um, yeah. On the flip side, Having these recordings of all these meetings, I can tell you, has has been a lifesaver because somebody said, well, you said this in this meeting. I'm like, I don't think I did. And so then I'd go search and figure out whether or not I did or didn't, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I never I thought, John, your, your point at the very beginning of not only having your notes, but having the faces of the people with that is is a real value proposition there. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm, you know, I'm either looking them up on LinkedIn again to get their you know, their headshot before I talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. No, you'd be surprised how often I've had to pull that one out of my hat. Cause I was like, wow, I know, I know I talked to this person, you know, or they were in a group with me or whatever. And then I'll, I'll go and, and literally search for their name and it will show me which meeting at what point they spoke. So I could quickly go up and be like, oh yeah, that, right. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. Yep. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Sandy says plus 20. Was that for being in more than one place at a time? No, for I don't have time to go back and listen async to all these meetings that I'm triple or quadruple booked for. But being able to read through minutes is extremely helpful, especially the action items, because I'll get assigned a lot of action items in meetings I'm not in and someone will forget to tell me. <laughs> So therefore, Sandy, it, it sounds like you need to work for another company, Sandy. That's the only solution there. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sandy, are you really with us or is this your bot? Because all I'm seeing is a little cartoon. Oh, uh, that's my. <laughs> that's so is avatar. that really you or is that one of you? There oh, she look, is. There you are. Okay. <laughs> just checking. I'm just checking. You're in Zoom that I've been trying out with my team because, you know, there's uh, video fatigue. So you can substitute it with a with an avatar, you can create the avatar to look like you. It actually moves like I can, you know, open my eyes, close my eyes. You guys can see it. So it just, um, we do meetings on Fridays with avatars because people are just videoed out. Um, so I have it <laughs> all to an avatar on Friday. Did you guys see that video of that? <laughs> what was that business meeting where his kids had set it up to where he was a rabbit? Yeah, like yeah. Jake, but this guy was a rabbit and he didn't know how to undo it. And, and it was a it was a pretty sophisticated <laughs> business meeting. And they're like, uh, Bob, you know, you're you're a rabbit. He goes, Yeah, my kids had it. I don't know how to undo this. <laughs> it, was like, it was hilarious. But it is really helpful. I mean, I don't know if your teams have the same video fatigue that we do, but um, you know, there's been lots of research on it, how it's really taxing being like on camera all the time. So my team loves it and they change their dress and their hair. You know, you can make your hair pink or blue or there you go, Jake. So it's just a cool, um, a cool retreat, but it doesn't feel like you're just talking to a picture, which is very impersonal, right? You can yeah. see the, their head and blink their eyes. And right. Yeah. That's why I always tell people to, you know, flip on their camera and feel free to unmute so we can chat away. You know, I don't mind in this, uh, kind of a setting when people don't. But I tell you what, if I'm in a sales meeting and somebody's trying to sell me something or they're uh, you know, vendor to me and they have blank screens, I'm like, man, I, I wouldn't let that fly with my employees. Like if we're this, if this is the only way we can meet, I want to see you. I want to, you know, have the whole interaction going on. I don't want, you know, you to have a black screen and me to be on camera when I, we could just have had a telephone call, you know, and had the same effect, right? 
Yeah. So there's there's too much to be lost. Anyway, we are way off topic now, but Sorry. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any more questions for Daria while we got her on the call? Any more thoughts? One, one of the things okay. I was interested in actually is, uh, you know, the topic being here on taking feedback, actioning it back into the product. Uh, is there anywhere within the product where as a user, I could say, uh, you know, this was off the mark, this wasn't great. And that is that feedback going back into the product team and getting iterated? Um, yes, we have um, public roadmap on Trello. Uh, so it's attached to our website and in every email that we send. Um, and where we got um, upvotes for every feedback, that we receive from the users, and we collect uh, upvotes in order to uh, prompt this feedback to the production quicker. Uh, so it is not uh, somewhere here that you can upvote, for example, AI summary, uh, but we want to introduce it um, to the emails that we send as well. Uh, but uh, it's available from uh, another bot. Fabulous. OK. Well. Um... If there are no other questions, I know Chrissy was uh, curious about the price. Can you walk us through your pricing model there, Daria? Uh, <clears throat> sure. Uh, so I will uh, open the page so it will be even more transparent. Um, so um, we have free plan for sure. Uh, so everyone usually starts with the free plan. Uh, the limitation here are the number of hours recorded. Um, so, uh, mm, and the some functionalities, for example, video recording, for example, when I was joining you during previous round table, I saw that uh, the record video recording and screen sharing was not there because it was free plan. Uh, starting from pro, uh, you have uh, all the um, recordings, extra functionalities like integrations with uh, um, Slack uh, and other stuff. Um, and a uh, big difference in the number of hours between the packages. Um, good uh, point uh, to make me here is that uh, today we discussed with uh, Dan, it's uh, our CEO, and we want to grant three months of free business um, usage uh, to everyone who wants to sign up after this round table. Um, all yeah. you need to do is just to put um, a CXO in the support chat or whatever uh, communication uh, you will choose um, to contact us, email, uh, in-app chat. Um, and we will apply this three months free business uh, trial. So you can so test all the features here. CXO or yeah. 60? CXO. Ah, oh, CXO. Awesome. Like that. Okay. Yeah, because I actually perfect. set up while you were talking, but I didn't know about that offer. But it's I just set up the free version for my next meeting to try it. Cool. And I, I would be cool. happy to know the feedback. <laughs> okay. okay, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's but great. Uh, yeah, you can actually uh, even uh, before the call um, reach out to us with this uh, CXO note uh, and we will apply um, the business uh, package to you before the call. Uh, so you will receive it already with the video recording and other stuff. That's awesome. How long is that good for? Because what I'll do is I'll email out everybody after this call because a few of them dropped off. And if, if what you and I can do is we can go back and forth on some email instructions and then I'll, I'll send that out to everybody. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Well, thanks. Daria. I, That's sorry, sweet offer. Cause I'm in there right now and I don't see like a, a support a place to put it. Yeah. Okay. You can, uh, probably I can just put in chat my email and, uh, Anyone who will email me, <laughs> uh, I will be the person given the present. Mm -hmm. Oops. You're going to put that in the chat. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, Daria. That's an awesome, that's an awesome gesture. We really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure.
I mean, uh, yeah, it might gesture for all the feedback that uh, we collected during the previous and this session, uh, because uh, I already noted in several uh, comments that are nice contributors to the uh, to our product. Well, this has been amazing. I sure do appreciate it. I really appreciate the fact that your brand was listening and actually doing something with it. That speaks volumes to me. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. I appreciate everybody joining us. Um, we will be back next week. I'll probably be focusing on video next week. Uh, if anybody's interested in video editing, uh, I've got a couple of things that I've got to accomplish this week. And so I'll be using those tools and I'll let you know how that turns out. And Daria, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Um, have a great evening where you are. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, thank for you. the rest of you guys, thanks again. We will see you next week. Holler at me if you got questions. May I ask a uh, question? Oh, yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, because I have to create an infographic this week. Has anybody found an AI tool that will take content and create an infographic for you? Oof. I we tried that and I can't that. get the words down. We yeah. we looked into that. Do you remember maybe like a couple of months ago? But the one that we found was, yeah, it, it was it was awful. <laughs> so yeah. I would not recommend it. And then I got charged forty dollars a month afterwards without realizing it. So yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to keep looking into that and let you know. Okay, yeah. yeah. Find one, finds one, let me know. Otherwise, I've got to go slug it away by right. Fiverr. Uh, <laughs> Fiverr. <laughs> Fiverr is your AI <laughs> for that, I guess. Yeah, okay. but if I find one, I'll, I'll let you know, Sandy. Thank you, guys. All right. Y'all take care. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.